three-time 1500 meters world champion as Bill Kiprop is facing an anti-doping rule violation charge by the World Athletics governing body. The Kenyan champion has denied the charge and has vowed to challenge the adverse analytical finding of his urine sample in London later this month. CGTN's Sadiq Shaban explains how he tracked down the athlete for an exclusive interview. News of Asbel Kiprop's failed doping test set off a friends and media scramble to find the athlete. Yeah, uh, not much success. Uh, we're still trying to find out and try and locate. Yeah, not much success. For three days, the athlete and his legal team wouldn't reveal their whereabouts, but we managed to make a significant breakthrough after a tip-off. We had finally found him. Hello, Mr. Asbel Kiprop. My name is Sadiq Shaban from uh, CGTN. Thank you very much indeed for finding time to speak to us. This is the man they're all after, the Olympic champion, the world champion. He's Kenya's foremost 1,500 meters runner, the best in his generation in the last two decades. But he's now facing a four-year ban for anti-doping rule violation. Recombinant erythropoietin. But this case has a twist. Uh, I was asked for money for the first time by it. Uh, anti-dubbing uh, co uh, collecting people, uh, to sample collecting people, and um, they asked me for money, and it's not, it's unusual for them to ask me for money. So. The Athletics Integrity Unit is now facing extortion claims that its doping control officer received money from the athlete. The IWF has admitted an improper conduct and departure of its process by its own anti-doping officers handling the Asbel Kiprop case who is still facing an EPO use charge. Um, I'm still innocent, uh, not because I want to say I'm innocent at all, but because in, it is indeed that I didn't uh, uh, have an injection uh, into my body since 2014. The IAAF says Asbel Kiprop's A and B samples have returned adverse analytical findings. We have uh, received their notification of their complaint that the uh, urine sample for Mr. Kiprop had uh, EPO, and we are contesting that allegation, including wanting the test retested, the sample retested. Uh, how long do you think this process is going to take? Hopefully another one month. Uh, anyway, that's all I wish to say. Thank you very much. Right, thank you, Mr. Yeah. Coincidentally, Asbel Kiprop won his only Olympic medal in 2008 after Bahrainian athlete Rashid Ramzi was banned for EPO use. Kiprop, how far are you willing to go to clear your name and to prove your innocence as you say? With all my strength I will, uh, and the truths that I have within me, I will try and explain and, and to tell the world and to be open enough and to be as transparent as possible. Um, because this is my life and this is my career. I have built for so many years and there are so many at young athletes who have been eyeing uh, on me globally and also, and also the, the kind of, you know, you know sometimes we, we have to fight uh, the truth, not to fight for the truth, you know, because we, we, there is no way that, you know, there is no way the truth there is no way that a lie or, or, or can, can, can be the truth. That truth could be determined by science and forensic scrutiny of the process and the product of anti-doping rule violation. It's that path to the truth that Asbel Kiprop says is willing to walk, even if alone. Sadiq Shaban, CGTN.
Right now, for more on this story, I'm now joined in studio by Moses Tanui. He's a retired Kenyan athlete and the first man to run the half marathon in under one hour. Moses, thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you very uh, much. I'll just begin by asking you, why is it that we've seen so many more of these cases uh, in modern day as opposed to during your time? Uh, what, one thing that I can say is that uh, during our times, when you are an Olympic champion, a world champion, you can run all the races in the world and mm. you can choose which one to run or which one to not run. And you can remember sometimes you can even choose not to run with your competitor. Mm. They, they, but nowadays, uh, it is very, very difficult to run, even if you are a world champion or an Olympic champion, and proceed to another race. For example, if you are an Olympic champion in August, by September, if you go to Zurich, uh, Diamond League mm. and you fail to be number top three or four then you cannot proceed to another race and that is now the problem with the Kenyan athletes mm. and I think also the biggest problem is that um, the agents also you know they they are in business and this is another big problem because mm. if you lose an athlete that is not winning Boston Marathon or London Marathon or even 1500 or 3,000 steeplechase mm. uh, in the next, so it's useless. So they are trying now to use enhanced substances so that they can be at the top for, for, many, for many days. And mm. this is a, the biggest problem in Kenya. Okay, and uh, of course, when we talk outside of Kenya, we've seen athletes like uh, Tyson Gay, uh, Justin Gatlin, and others who have uh, been caught uh, using performance-enhancing drugs. But would you say that uh, returning to Kenya, this is something that's becoming excessive in the country? I think this is something that is very sad to our country, mm -hmm. and also it is very difficult for us, either the retired athletes, to tell people that we used to run free uh, of drugs. But now we need to fight it and fight it completely. I want to say that uh, the government of Kenya mm. started ADAC, which is going on very well, testing athletes all over, which is something that was not there before. But I want to say, you know, these things, it comes in three different places. We have a coach, we have an agent, and an athlete. Mm. All of them it needs money. So what do they do? They try to spoil the Kenyan athletes. And remember that Kenyan athletes are so fearful. Sometimes they even don't understand what they do. But I want to say this. Um, Athletic Kenya has powers to, to deny any agent mm. or to write a letter to IF and say a certain agent must not um, have our athletes or represent our athletes in any races because if you are doping, you know now the biggest problem is that only athlete is being punished and, and the, the people who are surrounding, like the agent and the coaches, are not, they, they don't do nothing on them. So I'm saying today that uh, this is a decisive um, uh, thing that Kenyan must do, the Kenyan government and also Athletic Kenya, that they should stop all the agents that they represent these uh, athletes so long as you have, your athletes has been caught in doping. They mm. should stop them and try to tell them to come again and vet them so that we, we have good uh, representation of our athletes. Otherwise, we are going in the dark days mm. of this country. Indeed. And Moses, you just mentioned ADAC. They'll come back to you in just a moment. Uh, for now, only just two years ago, Kenya set up what Moses said, uh, ADAC, n the national anti-doping organization in the country to fight the scourge in Kenya. And with Asbel Kiprop's positive results for EPO, sharp focus will be on the organization once again. CGTN's Edmund Nyabola sat down with the anti-doping agency of Kenya CEO, Jafta Rugut, on the status of the organization. He began by asking him about ADAC's jurisdiction on Kiprop's case, having been tested by the IAAF. The decision can be made either to bring back the case once it is found positive. If there is an adverse uh, finding on the, the, the samples of that athlete, the results can now be brought to the National Federation, or rather the National Agency, 
like now and the doping agency of Kenya for what we call results management. This happens, but at the same time, um, the International Federation may choose uh, to manage those results uh, themselves. So the anti-doping agency of Kenya was formed uh, two or three years ago at a time when there was a lot of focus on Kenya. What has ADAC done in way of outreach and sensitization to make sure that this problem is nipped from the bud? We have outreach programs uh, across the country in, in various uh, fora, in um, competitions. Uh, we take advantage of uh, competitions in, in, you know, be it in athletics, be it in uh, rugby, and be it in hockey, uh, football and so on to ensure that we get you know, the message across. Um, we go beyond that we even uh, organize for events ourselves, where conferences where we, we, we pass out this information uh, to ensure that uh, the excuse that we, you know, I didn't know doesn't come in uh, any time that we find uh, an athlete uh, tested positive. So in your dealings with athletes running your programs, where do you find the biggest challenge? Is it with young upcoming athletes or elite athletes who are already established out there? As, as at now, we don't have much of a problem with the upcoming athletes because they listen. You know, they, they, have, they have a fertile mind. You know, they need to be taught. Um, we want to pass the message so that they know and, and they get the right values uh, in them to know that uh, doping is wrong. It is, uh, it is unethical. It is cheating. But by the time that uh, athletes reach elite status, you know, sometimes uh, getting them uh, may not be very easy. They compete outside there. You know, the elite athletes would be in the county, say, for three months uh, at any given time. The rest of them, eight, nine months, they are out there training or competing. So um, at, at that point, that is where we say that uh, this is an individual thing. But so long as the message has reached them. So the problem is largely within athletics in the case of Kenya. Uh, what is the situation with the other sports disciplines within the country? Do you test other um, sports personalities from other disciplines? And what are the results that you found? I will say this without going into, into specifics. They are there. If you run through the list of uh, the ADRVs, the anti-doping rule violations that we have ongoing now, we will have cases from other disciplines. We have cases from uh, weightlifting, we have cases from uh, swimming. Uh, they are there. But as I said, in terms of numbers, in terms of prominence, we, we don't have big names in those other sports which can easily attract uh, attention. The way those who have uh, participated in uh, international marathons, in international uh, competitions, events uh, like the World Championships, uh, that we have in athletics, uh, you know, would attract attention. Going by the latest developments, there's going to be a lot of focus on Kenya uh, from international authorities and the whole sporting world. What is the anti-doping agency of Kenya going to be doing to reaffirm to them that you are indeed in control of the situation? It requires that we gather some intelligence. We know where, you know, there is a propensity towards doping, that there is um, the likelihood more in certain events for example, the endurance events, that is where there is a uh, more likelihood of somebody to use a substance to enhance his performance. Right, we are still speaking to Moses Tanui, a retired Kenyan athlete, about the doping crisis in the country. And Moses, there have been renewed uh, calls in Kenya to vet athletics agents uh, afresh once again. Uh, in the grand scale, would you say that they are culpable as well in this doping problem? You know, if, if the punishment is on both sides, mm. with the athlete and, and also the agent, then everything will, you know, everybody will be careful on what, what to take or what to do. So what I'm saying is that they should vet the, uh, the agents and try to stop those agents who have athletes who have doped. Mm. And this is what I'm advocating for, and I will not entertain any, I, it is very hard to tell Kenyans that uh, the truth. But the truth is that even if we want to lose this year, mm. because we want to clean our country, if, even if we want to stop all the at least not to participate in any other, uh, other meetings, I know people will be saying Moses is too arrogant, but mm. I'm saying this one so that we clean our country and make sure that we start with a new slate. Because we cannot be accused every time of one thing that is supposed to be stopped. Doping you can stop because mm. it is something that you take and it is something that you 
know very well that this is not very good. And remember that how many athletes have been, they have died. We have about 15 or 10 athletes hmm, that are dying every, every, mm. every day. We mm. don't know what is the cause. Sometimes you find somebody is running uh, and we, the heart stopped. So we don't know what is it because several times the doctors have not even revealed to us mm. what happened to the athlete. Indeed, because as you said uh, during the break when we were speaking, uh, the, the, the punishment yes. and not only from the, I, the IWF yes. uh, lands solely on, mm. on the, on the uh, athlete themselves. And finally, just uh, rather quickly, I'll just ask you quickly, Moses, yeah. uh, coming back to athletes, do they know their obligations when it comes to anti-doping? Let me tell you, you know, anti-doping is something that even an athlete that starts to train today, they know it. It is a matter of maybe peer pressure from the athletes about what they want to gain in, in, uh, at the end of it. But they don't know also that they are ruining their lives because you cannot enjoy your full life mm. like some of us when you do doping because you are trying to make yourself rich and then all of a sudden you, you are not there. Mm. So I'm saying all the athletes know what they are doing and the punishment should be even severe. They should even take out of all those athletes that have doped and not to return to athletics mm. anymore. If, if that is happening, then the sport will be clean. Mm. Otherwise, if we ban them for four years, two years, they will do the same. They will come back and compete. So for me, personally, mm. I want to take, with, I need IF, WADA, and all other concerned bodies to ban the athlete's life because it is like stealing from others. Mm. Yeah, if you want to kill somebody with a gun, it's the same and take money. It's the same like uh, you run with the doping and uh, and win the, the prizes. It's not acceptable. Indeed, and yes. hopefully your 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 uh, suggestions will be implemented. Hopefully we can see a big change in Kenyan athletics. Moses Tanui, thank you very much thank you. for speaking to us on Match Point. Uh, retired Kenyan athlete Moses Tanui speaking to us there about the ongoing doping crisis in the country.